Have you ever wondered what it's like to work for the police force? What really goes on behind the scenes? I know I've talked to some of the officers. They got some crazy stories. Oh, yeah, they do. Well, three years ago, we introduced you to a retired sergeant who gives you a front row seat to his 26 year career on the force in his book, Busting Bad Guys. Well, he did bust some bad guys. Now you have a chance to hear some of these stories in person. Welcome back, Mark. Langan, good to see you, Mark. Hi. Well, thanks so much for having me. Three and a half years ago, it's hard to believe. But I know, been, yeah, it has, yeah, and much success to you. I mean, it's been things have been going well for mm -hmm. you on this book. You know, you? it's been crazy, way more than we expected. We've done book signing events, over 200 events in Omaha in the past yeah. three years, and from Seattle, San Francisco, all the way to Baltimore. So it's been quite a ride. Would you remind our viewers? I know we talked about this over three years ago, but why did you write this book? Well, I was an Omaha police officer for 26 years and had such great stories. And for years, people told me you need to write a book. And I finally put my mind to it and did it. And now here we have Busting Bad Guys. And what's the book about? Well, like one of your top stories in there. Uh, yeah, ooh. let's hear you it. Know, uh, give us the juicy uh, Some of the juicy stuff. You know, the story that people like the most when I do book signing events, people will come up that have read the book and they'll say well, they love the story about the Benson area drug dealer who mm -hmm. had a hidden room in the basement and who actually hid a woman in that room under his wife's nose. She had no idea this, this girl was being hidden in the room. And when the wife would go to work, the girl would come out. When the wife came home, the girl would go in. He'd put the dresser in front of the wall. She Crazy voluntarily, story. Voluntarily, oh, sure. lived yeah, voluntarily, voluntarily lived there. Voluntarily lived there. Yeah, kind of some methamphetamine involved in yeah. that situation there. But a crazy story. Wow. Caused many a wife who's read this book to go through the house I'm checking sure. for oh, hidden rooms. Check for those secret yes, passages. Without a doubt. Without a it's doubt. crazy. So it's been very successful. Tell us about all the national exposure that you've received. Yeah, you know, we've been on, I've done media events, uh, Montreal, Boston, Baltimore, we've done book signing events, like I said before, Seattle, San Francisco, we'll be going to Virginia Beach in October. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there who like true crime books, and that's kind of their genre. Mm -hmm. And especially here in Omaha, they're all Omaha-based stories that I was mm -hmm. involved in, so people seem to really enjoy it. People tell me they'll drive to the locations after they read the book, mm -hmm. kind of check things out a little bit. So it's been way more than I thought it was going to be, but a lot of fun. And I heard at UNO, uh, is there a textbook? Uh, relating to how does this, what's that all about? It's crazy, but Busting Bad Guys is now a textbook in the Criminal Justice Department at UNO. So we're very proud of that. Very that's excited. Amazing. I go to UNO all the time and talk yeah. to the classes oh, and everything. Sure, yeah. So that's really something. When that happened, I was like, wow, we've, we've arrived now. <laughs> we're a textbook at, at UNO. What do the students say when you talk to them? You know, they love the stories. Because these and, are uh, people that might go into law enforcement. Yeah, you know, they're pretty wide-eyed when I tell them stories about busting drug dealers mm -hmm. like I did for, for the last 18 years I was on the job. Some of the hairy situations that we got involved in. So it's not hard to... Mm -hmm hold an audience's attention when I come in and talk about these stories. Yeah. Well, and how cool to hear about it from someone face to face. They actually see you and it's in their own community where they're living right now. They I can mean. really identify with it. And I've had mm -hmm. several come up to me uh, from UNO and other colleges I talked to that said, I was kind of on the borderline about wanting to be a cop. I want to be a cop after reading your book and hearing your story, which really yeah. means the world to me when, I, when people say that. So you don't mm -hmm. scare them away. I try not to scare them <laughs> you away. You don't scare them away. You know, and and I, I tell people, Omaha's a great city to live in. And, and I'm born and raised here. I'll be here the rest of my life. But it has, it has crime like any other city in the country, mm -hmm. which is why I wrote the book. But, you know, Omaha's really a great town to live in. Yeah, of all the stories in that book, how many of them receive media attention? Because the ones that re receive media attention are, are, are kind of the, the murderers and... and uh, some of the bigger cases like that, but uh, do you cover some of those in the book, or are the, is it more of the stories you haven't heard about? Well, some of the stories in the book uh, received a large amount of media attention, some situations that I was involved in mm -hmm. involving, um, you know, deadly force situation that yeah. I was involved in, but the vast majority of stories are probably those that didn't make the media, but they're great stories, human interest type mm -hmm. stories involving drug dealers. You know, I've had so many people that I've arrested uh, since this book came out yeah. that have come up to me in like restaurants oh. or bars and they've said, am I in the book? Right. Yeah. Or they've said, please tell me I'm not in the book. I get right, one right. or two reactions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's just amazing the number of people that have reached out to me that I've arrested and they've all been really friendly so far. Yeah. Knock so on wood. Far, so far, yes. So far, so far. <laughs> well, you do, like you said, plenty of book signings. What does it feel like to autograph your own book? Wow. You know, I never take that for granted. It's so mm -hmm. cool when somebody wants an autographed book and I usually inscribe it with something kind of kind of clever mm -hmm. or something like that. But I never take that for granted because it's just so cool that somebody actually wants to buy my book and read my life mm -hmm. story. I never take that for granted. Yeah, you mentioned that use of force. There's a lot of officers, whether it's uh, police officers or sheriff's deputies, never have to use their gun in the line of duty. Uh, for, thank, thankfully, uh, you did have to. Yes, I did. And I write about that in detail in the book in regards to the effect it had on Myself, the other officers involved, my family, the suspect's family. Mm -hmm. You know, I write about a strange meeting that I had 
about four or five years after the shooting with the suspect's daughter, mm -hmm. the suspect in that shooting's daughter. We met as kind of a form of closure for mm -hmm. her. I mean, just a really bizarre set of circumstances, but those are impactful situations yeah. on many, many lives, and I try to touch on that in the book. Yeah, I don't think people realize that when, when they hear of officers having to use their gun, realize mm -hmm. the impact it has not only on, the, on the, the, the people that they're aiming that weapon at, but also the officers themselves. And it's rare for police officers to have to do it, but yeah. it's yet rare but impactful when it happens. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, we're running out of time, but I do want to know, is there a second book in the future? We're working on a second book. All right. And uh, we're excited about that. Maybe in about a year or two, I'll be done with that. Mm -hmm. Well, it you takes know. a lot of time. It does take a lot of yes. time. Some days the creative juices flow, some days they don't. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you realize how that works. <laughs> oh, yeah. And everything. But we have an event coming up at the Durham. Yes, let's talk to that. Let's talk about that. What's that event at the Durham Museum? we got some of the information on the screen right there. Fantastic. Next, uh, or Tuesday, July 25th, 630, the Omaha Police Department historical display is there. Mm -hmm. And I've been asked to come in and give a talk about my book and my life on the Omaha Police department very excited about that yeah you want to let the museum know that you're coming if you can reservations at durhammuseum.org and where can people get your book uh, they can get it at uh, the Nebraska Main Society bookstore where I work at now they can uh, bookworm or order it online off Amazon well congratulations on all your success thank you and so thank much you for yeah. your service thanks for having me thank, thank you very much appreciate it well